Okay, uh, everybody can see my screen. You can listen to my voice. Semua boleh dengar? Boleh nampak screen? Yes, Dr. Boleh, Dr. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, last week I have uh, uploaded uh, two videos uh, for chapter 4. Okay, so chapter 4, I already covered all of the topics. Okay, so if you study for, for the two videos, I assume, uh, I, I believe that you can understand uh, very well about chapter 4. Okay, uh, and then now we will start uh, learning about chapter 5, which is about the transmission line, antenna and wave propagation. Okay, so this is the, this is the, uh, the last chapter. So, uh, this chapter consists of three main topics. Uh, the first one is about the transmission lines, and then the antenna, and then the wave propagations. So, if you see from here, uh, these three topics uh, actually uh, overlapping with uh, topics in other subjects. Okay, for example, uh, like the uh, applied electromagnetics okay where you will learn about more about transmission lines and then we have another subject uh, antenna subject okay where you will learn a lot of uh, uh, concept about antenna and then uh, for the wave propagation it is actually uh, the topic in uh, subject of wireless communications so sebenarnya ada uh, tiga subject yang berkaitan dengan chapter 5. Okay. So, so maybe I just want to, uh, uh, I want to show you about uh, what actually we have, we will learn uh, in this chapter. Okay, what actually we will learn in this chapter. So, if you still remember the, the, the communication system, Okay, where we have the transmitter, okay, the transmitter, uh, so the transmitter transmits signals and then uh, transmit over the channel, okay, and then receive at the receiver, okay, and then we get the original signal back. So, uh, previously, you have learned uh, everything in the system. Okay, you sudah belajar uh, semua yang ada dalam systems. Okay, uh, up, uh, from chapter 1 until chapter 4, we have looked uh, many things, uh, many uh, issues inside the transmitter and also inside the receiver. Okay, now we don't want to look uh, into the system, but we want to look outside from the transmitter and the receiver side, okay, where uh, first you will learn about the transmission line. So the transmission line is uh, regarding the wire transmission, regarding the uh, wire or cable related to the transmission system. Okay, for example, here we have the uh, wire uh, cable over here, okay. Uh, from transmit from transmitter to the antenna and also from this antenna to the receiver and if we, if you use the wired transmission line so we're gonna have a long cable from the transmitter to the receiver so this is about the transmission line so this is the the first part of uh, chapter 5 and then the second part of chapter 5 you will learn uh, more about the concept of antenna okay only related to the antenna for the second uh, topics uh, so you learn about uh, uh, the concept of antenna types of antenna and so on okay and then uh, the last uh, topic in chapter 5 you will learn about uh, the wave okay the wave propagations okay the characteristics of the waves okay sifat sifat gelombang so, uh, this is all about uh, chapter 5, okay? So, three things that you will learn. And this chapter 5 will be 
uh, asked in the final exam data. Okay, so I go back to the slides. Okay, so I go back to the slide. <coughs> so if you see from uh, the slides, okay. So the types of waves, uh, transverse wave. Uh, so what is transverse wave? Uh, for example, like a uh, water wave and also the electromagnetic waves. So this is types of transverse wave. So transverse waves, you will see that uh, uh, the propagations, the direction of propagations, and also uh, the directions of the uh, waves are different. Okay, I mean, what I mean is that <coughs> uh, So, for the transverse wave, you're going to see that uh, uh, the waves travel at a certain distance, okay, at a certain directions, okay, and its oscillations are, uh, the oscillations of the waves is at different uh, angle of directions, okay. For example, here, the waves travels from here to here and then you're going to see that the wave oscillations okay the wave oscillate at different directions okay so here in electromagnetic wave we have electrical wave and also the magnetic uh, sorry electrical field and also the magnetic fields so electrical fields uh, oscillates uh, at these directions whereas for the magnetic fields oscillate at these uh, directions. So the oscillations and the direction of propagations are different to each other. They are perpendicular to each other. So dalam case ini, kita akan lihat bahawa electromagnetic wave ini uh, dia punya arah uh, perambatan gelombang itu pada arah yang berbeza dengan arah uh, oscillation. Okay, oscillation adalah uh, pergerakan uh, gelombang tersebut. Eh. So this is, yeah, we will uh, learn more about this electromagnetic waves. Uh, similar with the water wave also uh, will produce the same characteristics. Okay, so other than transverse waves, we have a longitudinal wave, uh, which is uh, related to the sound wave. Okay, so sound wave, uh, you see that uh, the oscillations and also the wave oscillations and also the direction of propagation are at the same directions, okay, dia pada arah yang sama, dia arah, oscillation, uh, arah oscillations dan juga arah uh, pergerakan uh, gelombang itu pada arah yang sama, okay. So, uh, if you can see from uh, these slides, okay, you see that <coughs> this is uh, the example of transverse wave, you see that transverse wave is moving, uh, is a wave moving, is a moving wave that consists of oscillations, occur uh, perpendicular or right angle to the direction of uh, energy transfer. So if you see, if you can see the animation here, okay, so the waves oscillates up and down and it moves to the right side. Okay, so this is an example of a transverse wave where the oscillations are, uh, the, the angle of oscillations perpendicular to the angle of propagations. So, ini adalah sifat kepada transverse wave. So, transverse waves, uh, there are four possible types, okay, what we call as a modes of transverse. So, the first one is a transverse electromagnetic, also known as the TAM mode. Okay, so TAM mode, uh, this is what we seen from uh, previous slides about the electrical field and also the magnetic field. So we, we will see about this later. Uh, also, we have the second part is transverse electric, where there's no, ele uh, which is uh, known as a TE mode, where there is no electric field in the direction of propagations. And then transverse magnetic TM mode, where there is no magnetic field in the direction of propagations. Hybrid modes. Uh, where there is no non-zero electric and magnetic field 
in the direction of propagations. So, uh, in this chapter, we will focus about the time mode. Okay. So, both TE and TM modes, okay, transverse electric and also transverse magnetic modes, only possible inside a hollow metallic waveguide. So, waveguide uh, is the is a component uh, of a hollow metallic. Okay, it's a metallic component uh, which we use uh, to connect between the transmitter and the receiver. Okay, so if you have the transmitter and also the receiver, okay, so we use some sort of uh, hollow metallics. Eh? Okay, so. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, the, uh, there are many uh, shape of the wave guides. Okay, uh, while well, you can assume that it is looks like a, a like a metal pipe. Okay, there's a pretty uh, bentuknya seperti pipe uh, besi. Eh? Uh, tetapi uh, what be, uh, but the shapes can be uh, uh, in any in uh, uh, different kind of shapes so it has a different kind of shapes but you see that it is a hollow metallic it's some sort of like a uh, like a pipe actually eh? this a pretty pipe uh, tetapi dia uh, dalam bentuk uh, besi eh? hollow metallics so this is um, uh, the that uh, metallic can uh, is a conductor where you can uh, transmit uh, the electromagnetic waves so uh these uh, uh these what they call the <coughs> wave guides filled with homogeneous uh, isotropic materials so homogeneous isotropic they dalam satu jenis material saja and in rectangular wave guide so we have a rectangular wave guide the mode of propagating in the wave guide are designated by two suffixes numbers attached to the mode types so uh, if you see uh, about the rect uh, the waveguide they have uh, 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 these uh, suffixes uh, m and n okay te and tm uh, m and n where m and n is the number of half wavelengths across the width and the height of the uh, respected waveguide so this is related to the size of the waveguide okay so this uh, m and n is related to the size of the waveguide so it is measured in terms of wavelength dalam sebutan lambda okay so m and n adalah parameter yang menggambarkan size uh, waveguide tersebut dalam sebutan lambda okay so when we uh, mention about the size of the waveguide we are not mentioning about uh, how much the diameter and so on we are uh, more preferring to, to mention in, in terms of lambda so dia berkaitan dengan size lambda so if you if you know that if we know the lambda then we can uh, we can determine the, the frequency of the propagations okay and then about transverse uh, electromagnetic so the transverse electromagnetic uh, propagation of electrical power along the transmission line occurs in the form of transverse electromagnetic. So propagation of electromagnetic dalam uh, cable, electrical cable, dia dalam bentuk uh, TAM modes. Okay, tadi waveguide adalah berbeza. So kalau kita uh, hantar signal dalam cable, uh, for example, copper cable, uh, so dia dalam bentuk uh, electromagnetic waves okay so a time waves propagates uh, primarily in the non-conductor dielectrics that separates the two conductor of the transmission line so later we're going to see that uh, there's a two conductor uh, for the transmission line eh? okay so two wired uh, pairs over this so we're going to see about this uh, wi uh, wire type later uh, e and H fields are perpendicular to each other. So we are talking about electric field and also the magnetic field. So remember that transverse electromagnetic consists of electrical field and also the magnetic field. Where both of these 
are perpendicular to each other. So their direction is perpendicular to each other. So this is referred to as space quadrature. So this is just, just a term to, to describe the, uh, the angle of the propagation of E and H field. So TAM modes is not possible in the waveguide. So kita tak boleh menggunakan TAM mode dalam waveguide. So waveguide only specific for TE, uh, TE mode and also TM modes only. Uh, on microscript line, the inhomogeneity of the boundary between the two medium substrate uh, and air produce a slightly different type of TAM waves often uh, referred as quasi TAM uh, wave. So this is about the microstrip line. So we're going to see also this uh, later in the, in the next slides. Okay. Uh, so maybe here you can see clearly what happened to the uh, TAM waves. So transverse electromagnetic waves can also be uh, transferred in the free space. Okay. Kita boleh juga uh, menghantar gelombang TAM modes eh, uh, melalui udara okay, in free space. Okay, so in free space, the radio waves travel in the form of transverse electromagnetic waves. Okay, dia tidak uh, dalam udara, dia dalam dalam uh, mode uh, tam modes. Eh. So if you see from here uh, in these uh, animations, okay, you can see that uh, the the blue color is the magnetic field, the orange color is the electric field, and you see that both electrical and uh, magnetic field oscillates at different angle where both of them are 90 degrees to each other. Okay, kedua-dua uh, gelombang, uh, kedua-dua medan elektrik dan juga medan magnet berayun pada uh, uh, pada sudut yang berbeza sebanyak 90 darjah. Okay, they are perpendicular to each other. And both of these moves at the different directions. Okay, dia bergerak pada arah yang uh, yang lain tetapi bersama-sama eh. okay. so both E field and H field moves together at, uh, towards, us, towards the same directions and about the wave velocity okay, the wave velocity describes the speed of the wave travel through the medium okay, so the medium here what we call as a channel okay. So the wave velocity depends on the types of waves and the characteristics of the medium. So dia bergantung juga kepada jenis medium. You see that the medium can be the free uh, air, can be the air, can be uh, water, okay, can be uh, different kind of uh, materials uh, to connect between the transmitter and the receiver. Okay, so dia ada banyak uh, jenis. Uh, Medium, okay. Medium ini tidak semestinya hanya uh, udara sahaja. Uh, udara, uh, that means uh, the air, or we call it as a free space. Eh? So uh, it can be other types of material that uh, the wave also can travel, but at different kind of speeds. Okay, at different speeds. In the free space or in the vacuum, the electromagnetic field travel at the speed of light. Okay which is uh, 2.998 times 10 power of 8 or approximately equal to 3 times 10 power of 8 meter per second. Okay. In such a medium at, uh, as air, the atmosphere, the wave travel slower than the vacuum. And this decreases the further speed when it travels in the transmission line. So if, you, if the wave travel at the transmission line, it will be more slower. Okay. So, uh, gelombang ini paling laju di pada medium vacuum yang mana kelajuannya uh, hampir uh, kelajuannya adalah dikatakan sama dengan kelajuan cahaya dan apabila gelombang itu uh, bergerak pada medium udara kelajuannya akan berkurang sedikit daripada kelajuan cahaya dan kalau gelombang itu uh, merambat pada uh, medium uh, uh, transmission line dia akan menjadi lebih uh, lebih perlahan eh. So this uh, velocity of the waves is described as V equal to VF multiplied with C, speed of light. Okay, so V is the wave velocity multiplied with the velocity factor 
multiplied with uh, speed of light. So this velocity factor maximum is equal to one. It is depends on the type of materials for the uh, for the medium. Dia bergantung kepada jenis material uh, medium tersebut. Eh. Adakah dia udara, uh, vacuum, air, uh, uh, wire dan sebagainya lah. So dia ada banyak jenis medium. So this uh, factor, velocity factor is uh, dia adalah uh, nisbah kelajuan eh, berbanding dengan kelajuan cahaya. So we're going to see about this uh, VF table later. Okay. And then um, frequency and wavelength. Frequency and wavelength. Uh, so uh, you see that the wavelength is the length of one complete oscillation of transverse wave, lambda. So wavelength menggambarkan uh, jarak uh, perambatan gelombang. Okay, it describes uh, the distance that the wave has traveled in one complete cycle. Berapa jauh gelombang itu telah bergerak dalam untuk satu complete in one complete cycle. So this the distance that travel by the wave is uh, described uh, as parameter lambda, which is equal to velocity multiplied with time. So remember that velocity in meter per second multiplied with second. So you're gonna uh, get uh, the value in term of meter. Okay, you're gonna get the value in term of meter. And uh, frequency is the rate at which oscillating wave repeats itself. Okay, is the rate at which the oscillating wave repeats itself. So F is equal to uh, 1 over T, or we can say that lambda is equal to V over F. Okay, lambda is equal to V over F. And in free space propagations, V is equal to C. Okay, V is equal to C, where lambda is equal to C over F. Okay, so uh, if it is in the free space, then we can say that this uh, velocity is equal to the speed of light. So this is the common uh, equation that we use to find lambda. Lambda equals uh, speed of light divide with the frequency of transmission. So you see that from here, uh, C over F. So the the higher the frequency, uh, the 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 lower would be the uh, the lambda. Okay, the lower the frequency, the longer would be the lambda. So lambda is in term of meter. Okay, lambda disebut dalam sebutan meter. Okay, frequency adalah kadar oscillations uh, dalam sebutan hertz. Okay, frequency in term of hertz. Okay, oscillations, the, the, the rate of oscillations per seconds. And you see that here, uh, about uh, displacement and velocity of transverse wave as it propagates down a transmission line. So, uh, where is lambda? Lambda is, you can see that uh, in one complete cycle, for example, the first graph here starts from zero until here. So, this is one complete cycle. So the distance of uh, uh, the displacement of the wave in one complete cycle, this is what we call as the lambda, okay? And here also lambda, okay? This is also lambda, okay? Jarak untuk satu, uh, jarak perambatan dalam untuk satu kitaran lengkap, okay? So if you, uh, for example, a second wave uh, like this, so you see that here, this is also one complete cycle. Okay, and here you see that here also is one complete cycle, lambda also. Eh? Okay, so this, uh, the lambda is, uh, you, you need to see the, uh, the, the pattern of one complete cycle. So that after, uh, in one complete cycle, you can see that how long does the wave has traveled. Okay, dalam satu kitaran lengkap. Transmission line. Uh, so this is about the cables. Okay, the cables from a uh, transmitter uh, to the receiver. Okay, types of transmission lines. So uh, in in this syllabus, transmission line uh, 
uh, not only categorized as uh, wired, it can also be categorized as wireless. Eh? Okay, so dalam syllabus kamu, dalam uh, chapter ini, eh, uh, apabila disebut transmission line, it is actually means uh, the medium itself. Okay, the medium can be wired or wireless. Okay, or in this case, uh, we are categorized as unguided or guided. Okay, so for the first part, guided transmission media uh, are those with some form of conductor that provides conduit where the electromagnetic signals are contained. So this is example of copper wire and optical fiber. So guided transmission media is referring to the wired transmission. Okay, guided transmission media ini merujuk kepada uh, wired transmission. Okay, menggunakan kabel yang menghubungkan antara transmitter dan juga receiver. So you see that the word guided means that the wave is guided from one place to another place. So it will follow the transmission, uh, the wired cable. Okay, so this is different from the wireless transmission. So wireless transmission using unguided transmission. So if you if we transmit the signal in the in the in the air, you see that the wave can travel at many at different directions towards the receiver. Apabila kita menggunakan uh, medium udara, gelombang itu dia akan bergerak pada arah yang pelbagai uh, menuju kepada receiver. So the wave is not guided actually eh, from the uh, from the transmitter to the receiver. So that's why they use the word, the term here is unguided. Okay, there's no physical conductor. So, uh, the direction of propagation in unguided transmission medium depends on the direction of the signal was emitted. So, example of the unguided uh, transmission media is air and also the free space vacuum. And then uh, guided transmission lines uh, regarding the cable using the transmission cable, we have the balanced transmission lines, unbalanced transmission lines, and also balloon is a hybrid uh, combination of balance and also the unbalanced. So we are talking about the wired transmission line. Eh? So balanced transmission line is a two wire transmission line, okay, where both conductors carry the currents. Okay, so dalam kes ini akan ada dua conductor yang menghubungkan antara uh, transmitter dan juga receiver. So one conductor carries the signal while the other conductor carries the return path. Okay, so uh, another uh, one path and uh, another path. So this kind of transmission is called a different uh, differential or balanced signal transmission. Uh, okay, so... You see that uh, this is uh, types of uh, balanced transmission line where we have two conductors here, two conductors uh, connected between two points, okay? And both of these has a common ground voltage, okay? So this is uh, uh, the picture over here. You can see that uh, this is a, a balanced transmission line, uh, for example, like the twin lead, okay? So, dalam satu kabel itu, dia ada dua conductor. Okay. Uh, balance transmission lines, example of balance transmission line is the twin lead, unshielded twisted pair and shielded twisted pair. So, ada uh, pelbagai jenis uh, balance transmission line uh, yang kita selalu gunakan. So, uh, this is an example of the balance transmission line. This is also balanced transmission line, uh, which is a twisted pair. So this is the, the conductor that we uh, we use uh, in our everyday, everyday life, actually. Eh? In, for example, in the iron, okay, streaker, dan perbagai peralatan elektrik yang lain. Okay, so the twist pattern result in reduction in electromagnetic interference EMI and radio frequency RFI. So you might wonder why uh, we always 
twist the cable why we always twist the, the cable for the for the connection of uh, electrical appliance so one of the reason is that we want to uh, reduce the emi effect okay so twisting reduce also reduce the crosstalk between the cable okay so uh, ini adalah kenapa kita uh, menggulung eh, dia punya uh, kabel tersebut eh, uh, twist like this so that we can reduce uh, this kind of interference shielded twisted pair so shielded twisted pair we have a, a shield okay that uh, enclose the uh, cable the wire over here okay so uh, shielded twisted pair also known as the STP has a better protection against the noise and able to transmit signal at higher bandwidth and bit rate. Uh, so it is more uh, more uh, immune towards the, the noise. So the, the reason we do the shielding in order to avoid the uh, the noise, okay, the, the, the interference from uh, an, another electrical uh, uh, electromagnetic waves eh, from the outside and then unbalanced transmission line uh, unbalanced transmission line uh, in this case we we only use one wire okay one conductor okay to, to connect from one point to another point so with unbalanced transmission line the ground wire may be the reference for another signal carrying the, the wires so the disadvantage of unbalanced transmission lines is reduce immunity to common mode signals such as noise and other interference. So this is the example of uh, unbalanced transmission line where we only use a single conductor to connect from one point to another point. Okay. So uh, in this case, uh, the the example of uh, unbalanced transmission line is uh, coaxial cable. So coaxial cable, uh, we 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 use to uh, normally this is used in the TV for the televisions uh, to connect the televisions and the antenna. So um, uh, we use the coaxial cable. Ini biasa digunakan eh kalau dalam uh, system TV uh, old television system. Uh, when we use the Yagi Uda antenna uh, above our uh, on the roof, eh, kita kita sambungkan menggunakan coaxial cable. Dan ada juga pelbagai uh, application yang lain menggunakan coaxial cable. So uh, this is uh, unbalanced uh, example of unbalanced uh, transmission line, and where we only have a single conductor like this. Okay, single conductor. So it can be shielded and also unshielded, uh, unbalanced co uh, conductor, an un unbalanced transmission line. So they will be shielded and also non-shielded. What about the balloon? Balloon is the uh, combination of uh, balance and also unbalanced. So balloon is actually used to connect uh, balanced transmission line and also the unbalanced transmission line. So, kita gunakan balloon actually to connect both of them together. Okay. So, balloon, you can see from here, we have uh, two types of balloon. Uh, the first one is the transformer balloon. So, transformer balloon here, this is the transformer balloon uh, to connect the unbalanced transmission line with the balanced transmission line over here. So we can use the uh, balloon to connect uh, transformer balloon to connect both of these. Okay, so we have uh, unbalanced over here on the left and balance on the right uh, in this example. And we can also use a bazooka balloon. Okay, so bazooka balloon is uh, uh, is this one? Eh? This uh, this kind of uh, this kind of things. This is a bazooka balloon where we want to connect the unbalanced uh, coaxial transmission line so this is the un coaxial transmission line with the balance uh, diode antenna over here okay so this is a two wire okay so both of these are connected using the bazooka balloon okay and there are other types of balloon as well not only these two this is just an example okay there are many many types of balloon 
and then transmission line electrical characteristics. Uh, so uh, this is the characteristic of the uh, wired or cable. Ini adalah kita ingin melihat apakah sifat-sifat transmission line tersebut. Eh? So we have uh, three main characteristics, okay, which is uh, characteristic impedance, velocity factor, and also the SWR. Okay, so these are the three main characteristics. The transmission line parameters. So transmission line parameters consists of uh, R, L, G, and C. Okay, so R is the resistance, L is the inductance, G is the conductance, C is the capacitance. So transmission line consists of all of these uh, uh, parameters. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, you're going to see later about uh, this. Okay, so each of the guided transmission line, uh, for example, coaxial to wire and planar lines has specific formula for the, for finding the R, L, G, and C. So uh, a long cable consists of repeatable sections of R, L, G, and C. Okay, untuk transmission line yang panjang, dia terdiri daripada para, uh, beberapa uh, parameter R, L, G, and C yang disusun secara berulang-ulang. Okay, we're going to see about that uh, uh, in the next slides. So the line parameters R, L, G, and C are not discrete or lump, but distributed as shown in figure 5.9. By this means that the parameters are uniformly distributed along the entire length of the transmission line. Okay. For each line, the conductors are characterized by uh, sigma C, uh, mu C, epsilon C. Okay, so we're going to see about this parameter in the next slides. So. So this is the uh, transmission line equivalent circuits. Okay, so you see that. Uh, so the R, L, G, and C. So this is you see that in a long transmission line, you're gonna see a repeatable section of lump R, L, G, and C. So R, L, uh, uh, there are. Um, arrange uh, in series and parallel uh, connection like this okay so you see that this is repeatable for for the whole uh, transmission line eh? so kita ada transmission line yang panjang dan dia terdiri daripada uh, beberapa lump element uh, which is uh, r l g and c connected in series and parallel in a repeatable uh, way eh? So, dia dalam disusun secara siri dan selari dan dia berulang-ulang uh, sepanjang transmission line tersebut. Okay. So, the C, uh, C re uh, represent by the capacitance, R is the resistance, L is the self-inductance, G, uh, G is the conductance uh, which is equivalent to 1 over, uh, 1 over R actually. Eh? So, G is 1 over R, so 1 over G is R actually, the resistance. Shun leakage, this is in, uh, in terms of ohms. So, uh, we're going to see later how we calculate the impedance of this transmission line. Okay. So, this uh, equivalent circuit is uh, important for your uh, final exam where you need to, to know about uh, the equivalent circuit of the transmission line. So, this is the general equivalent circuit for the transmission line. So... Uh, here, R is the AC resistance per unit length of the conductor comprising the line and the G is conductance per unit length uh, uh, due to the dielectric medium separating the conductors. So, the value of L, the inductance per unit length is L equal to L external. So, this is uh, regarding the, uh, the formula for the L and also for the G and C. So you don't need to memorize uh, this. Uh, you don't need to memorize the formula of this because a different transmission line consists of different uh, formula to calculate uh, the, the parameters. Okay. Uh, for example, like the, you see the uh, different kind, different types of uh, transmission line consists of different formula to, cal to calculate the R, L, G, and C parameters. 
Okay, so ini tidak perlu hafal. Eh. So you don't need to memorize this. Eh. Uh, just need to know that uh, different kind of cable consists of diff, uh, different kind of formula to calculate uh, the parameters. Okay. Skin effect. So skin effect has been asked a uh, long time ago in the final exam, if I'm not mistaken. So the, the, the question in the final exam uh, in the previous semesters asked, uh, describe the skin effect. Okay. Pernah ditanya sebelum ini ya, berkenaan dengan skin effect. So, uh, the skin effect, what is this actually? Uh, so, skin, uh, skin depth consists, uh, skin depth concept uh, arises from the skin effect, a phenomenon where at the RF and microwave frequencies, the current tends to flow only in the surface of the conductor. So, dalam case ini, in this case, when we use a high frequency, okay, high frequency waves, uh, we're going to see a, a phenomenon where the waves uh, travel as if it travel at the surface of the conductor, not in the core of the conductor. Okay. Apabila kita menggunakan frekuensi yang tinggi, kita akan lihat uh, gelombang ini seolah-olah dia merambat pada permukaan conductor instead of the core. Dia bukan pada core of the conductor. Uh, so, this is uh, seolah-olah macam dia pada skin, eh, pada kulit, uh, pada permukaan conductor tersebut. Eh. This is happens at high frequency. Okay. So, the skin depth uh, delta can be defined as the depth of penetration at which the magnitude of the current has decreased to 1 over E of the surface current value. Thus, to minimize the losses associated with this skin fact, the surface of the conductor must be smooth and the edges must be well defined. So, this is in order to avoid uh, the losses due to the skin effect. Okay, so what is delta? Delta is described using these equations. Again, you don't need to memorize these equations. Characteristic impedance. Uh, this is also among the favorite questions in the exam. Okay, so define the characteristic impedance. So characteristic impedance is, uh, in short, it is actually the impedance of the transmission line regardless of the length of the transmission line. So, dia adalah impedance kepada transmission line yang tidak bergantung kepada panjang transmission line tersebut. So, regardless of the length of the transmission line, yeah, the transmission line has the same impedance. Impedance ni masih sama, tidak kira berapa panjang transmission line tersebut. Eh. So, uh, in this case, you're going to see uh, uh, two different uh, definitions, but it is the same actually. Eh. Uh, so, Characteristic impedance is defined as the impedance seen looking into infinitely long line. So this is regarding this picture, uh, the first on the left. Eh? Uh, so if you have an infinite long transmission line, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, impedance seen looking from the, uh, on, the on, on this side. Eh? So kalau kita ada transmission line yang panjang, so it is defined as uh, 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 impedance of the long transmission line or we can also if we have a short transmission line it is the impedance seen looking into a finite length of transmission line that is terminated in a purely resistive load which is equivalent to the characteristic impedance of the line uh, so if you are using a short transmission line it is uh, looks as if it is uh, terminated with a load impedance equal to the characteristic impedance. So uh, this is uh, uh, maybe uh, quite confusing a little bit. Eh? What I want to say is that the characteristic impedance is the impedance of the transmission line, regardless of the length of the transmission line. Okay, tak kira apakah dia punya panjang, dia adalah merujuk kepada uh, impedance cable tersebut. Okay, so the characteristic impedance Z0 of the transmission line is a complex quantity in terms of ohm. So impedance, the unit is in terms of ohm. Ideally independent of the length and cannot be directly measured. Okay, remember Z0 uh, Z characteristic impedance is independent of the length. 
So for a maximum power transfer from the source to the load, okay, from uh, we use the term source, uh, the transmitter, and the load is uh, on the receiver side, okay. So from one place to another place. So kita tak gunakan uh, concept uh, transmitter system. Kita menggunakan from one point to another point. Okay. A transmission line must be terminated in a purely resistive uh, load equal to the characteristic impedance. So uh, it is said that ada gambar tak kat sini? Tak ada. So it is said that uh, a transmission line okay, in a transmission line if you have a load, if the load here has a impedance equal to the characteristic impedance, then we can say that, uh, so this is source eh, from the source. Okay, so if the load is, uh, if the load has a impedance equal to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line, then uh, we can say that it is, um, uh, the power is fully transferred from source to the load. Okay, and there is no written wave. Tidak ada written wave. Okay, kalau uh, load itu mempunyai impedance yang sama dengan karakteristik impedance, maka uh, uh, kita boleh katakan uh, uh, dia mengalami, uh, kita akan, kita boleh mel uh, melakukan maximum power transfer daripada source kepada load. Okay, dia tidak ada written wave. Uh, so, this is actually supposed to be explained. Eh? So, maybe I need to explain about this. Okay, so uh, it is actually explained in the later slides actually. Eh? So, what is this actually? This is regarding the uh, the wave uh, uh, forward and reverse wave. Eh? So, see that from source to the load. Okay. So, if it is a maximum power transfer, means that all of the power trans, uh, tra uh, from the source are transferred to the load. This is a, what we call as a maximum power transfer, Me means that there is no losses. Okay, there is no losses, uh, there is no power losses between the source and the load. All power are transferred to the load. Uh, this is if, only if the Z load is equal to the characteristic impedance. But if it is not equal, okay, if the load, uh, if the load impedance is not equal to the characteristic impedance, there are going to be some losses where some of the wave going to be returned back to the source directions. Okay, sebahagian gelombang itu akan mengalami kehilangan eh, losses dar pada arah yang berlawanan. Okay. So a transmission line can be modeled. Uh, so uh, about this concept, we're going to see later what happened if the load uh, has uh, different values of uh, impedance. Okay, apa jadi kalau load itu mempunyai uh, uh, impedance yang berbeza dengan karakteristik impedance. Okay, so uh, just remember that if you want to make to have a maximum power transfer, we need to make sure that the load impedance equal to the characteristic impedance. Okay, otherwise there's going to be a, a written wave. Eh? Okay, so we're going to see about this later in the next slides. Uh, a transmission line can be modeled using an infinite number of inductor and capacitor section that stores energy and is distributed inductance and capacitance. So this is the equivalent circuits that we have learned in the previous slides. Okay, so, so you see that this is uh, one section eh? a single section of transmission line where we have the rl over here uh, the resistance the inductance capacitance and also the resistance over here so this is a uh, one section of transmission line okay where we have source over here and we have uh, at the end here is terminated by the load so the load here is uh, it, so this is actually a uh, transmission line. Eh? Over here is actually the transmission line, the cable it's itself, which connect the source and also the load. Uh, okay. So if you have, if you want um, maximum power transfer from the source, we need to make sure that the load has impedance equal to the characteristic impedance. Kalau kita inginkan uh, maximum power transfer daripada source kepada load. 
kita perlu pastikan load itu mempunyai uh, impedance sama dengan characteristic impedance. Otherwise, okay, jika tidak sama, if not same, if if not equal to the characteristic impedance, there going to be some losses. Okay. So how to calculate the characteristic impedance? Macam mana nak mengira characteristic impedance? So there are many, uh, there are a few equations, uh, there are a few formulas uh, to calculate the characteristic impedance. Okay, the first one is, uh, this is the general equation. Eh? This is the general equations to calculate the characteristic impedance of a transmission line, which is equal to square root of R plus J omega L uh, divided with G plus J omega C. Okay, omega is equal to 2 pi f. And from the equation, we can identify two extreme cases. Okay, we can identify two extreme cases. Uh, ada dua uh, uh, case yang extreme, eh? iaitu uh, at low frequencies. Okay, low frequency maybe the, uh, in term of uh, kilohertz, for example. High frequency is... Uh, uh, hundreds megabyte uh, up to gigabytes and so on. Okay, uh, so in a, uh, this is quite subjective actually. Eh? So uh, in terms of uh, kilohertz, uh, so this is uh, we can say that low frequency. Eh? So in low frequencies, the resistance are dominance. So therefore, the characteristic impedance can be calculated using equal to square root of R over G. Okay, so the unit is in terms of ohm. In high frequencies, the inductance and capacitance are dominant compared to the resistance. So, characteristic impedance can be uh, calculated equal to square root of uh, L over C. Okay, so also in term of ohm. So, uh, this is, uh, regarding this, uh, normally uh, in the questions, uh, uh, the, the value of R, G, L, and C is in term of uh, per, per unit meter, in term of per unit length. Okay, biasanya diberikan dalam sebutan per unit length. Uh, for example, R is in term of ohm per unit length. Uh, L here is in term of uh, uh, Henry per unit length, or here is a Farad per unit length. Okay, so uh, when we divide, we're going to get the value of in term Ini ada example seterusnya. So, uh, regarding this, uh, this uh, characteristic impedance uh, equations has been asked also in the previous exams where we give the values of L. L diberikan value. Uh, C also has been given in the exam. Okay. So, the question asks, uh, calculate the characteristic impedance given, uh, given both of these uh, parameters. So, what you can do is that... Uh, 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 in the question also said uh, that it is operated at microwave frequencies. Microwave also it is in term of gigahertz, something like that. So this is uh, simply write like this L over C. So this is in the previous uh, final exams. Pernah ditanya, eh? Pernah ditanya. And uh, I can see that this is uh, first, uh, this is the third, uh, the third formula to calculate the characteristic impedance is equal to E over I. Uh, e is the source voltage, I is the transmission line current. Uh, so this is a more, uh, what do you call this is more uh, close the, ini lebih menggambarkan, this is more shows the uh, what, what happened, uh, what is actually the characteristic impedance. So, characteristic impedance is actually the impedance of the transmission line. So, since it is in term of ohm, eh, so we are still using the Ohm's law, okay, V over IR, eh, okay, uh, uh, V is equal to IR, okay, remember that V is equal to IR, uh, so R is equal to V over I. Okay, so this is the uh, Ohm's law. Eh? Uh, so this is in terms of Ohm. So you see that here is a voltage, okay, the source voltage. So the source voltage means that source, uh, okay, we have the source, and this is a transmission line. 
uh, we have the current over here okay so so source has a source voltage and this is the load okay so it is equal to the e over i okay and the unit is in term of ohm so other uh, there are three formulas that you can use to calculate the characteristic impedance okay so characteristic impedance can be calculated either by using the primary constant of the line or by geometry size and species of the conductors and by the dielectric constant of the insulator. So this is also another way to calculate the characteristic impedance. Uh, so uh, regarding this, uh, regarding this uh, using the primary constant, so this is depending on the uh, depending on the type of cable that we used. Okay, kalau kita nak menggunakan uh, para, uh, primary constant values, dia bergantung kepada jenis uh, transmission line. For example, like this. Eh? Uh, for example, like a two-wire parallel transmission line, uh, the characteristic impedance can be determined uh, based on this uh, dimension and also the, uh, the constant values. Okay, for example, like this, so uh, for the two trans two wire transmission line, the characteristic impedance is equal to two seven six log d over r. Okay, so what is d over r? D is the distance between center of the two conductors. R is the radius of the conductor. What is this actually? So this is referring to the picture on the left. Okay, regarding the two wire conductor. So two wire conductor, we have a uh, two two conductor. Eh? So over here and also over here. So the distance between these two conductor is a capital D in term of meter, and the radius. Okay, the radius of the conductor here is uh, what we call as a R parameter. Okay. So this is for two wire. What about for the coaxial cable? Okay, for for coaxial cable. We have different uh, different equations okay, based on the dimension and also the, uh, the what we call the dielectric parameter. Okay, so dia kalau kita nak meng, uh, mengira characteristic uh, impedance berdasarkan dimension dan juga uh, diameter uh, sorry uh, dielectric form uh, dielectric parameters constant parameters. Uh, dia ada pelbagai, there are a few formulas depending on the type of transmission line. Okay, Ini kalau kita nak mengira uh, karakteristik impedance menggunakan kaedah dimension, okay, size of the transmission line dan juga dia punya uh, dielectric parameter. So, for the coaxial cable, we see that uh, uh, characteristic impedance is equal to 138 divide with uh, epsilon r log D over D. Uh, so D, capital D, is the diameter of the insulating material. Small D is the diameter of inner conductor, also in meter. Epsilon R is the relative dielectric constant of the insulating material. So this has no unit. Okay. So what uh, you see that here, the, the capital D parameters is the diameter of the uh, wire itself, eh? diameter of the whole cable, okay, and then the small d is the di is the diameter of the conductor only, okay, and then epsilon r is the dielectric constant of this material. So epsilon r is depending on the type of uh, substrate that we use uh, for the uh, as a dielectric. Dia bergantung kepada jenis material yang digunakan sebagai dielectric di sini. So again, you don't need to memorize this one. Eh? Tidak perlu menghafal. Okay. Example one. So uh, determine the characteristic impedance for an uh, air the air dielectric two wire parallel D over R ratio is uh, 12.22. So calculate Z not our characteristic impedance is equal to 276 D over R. So this is for uh, two wire, okay, so, uh, as in the previous example, uh, 276 log D over R, okay. So, 
you are given d over r so therefore you can calculate uh, uh, inside the equations 276 log 12.22 so you get 300 ohms okay so simply if you want to replace uh, ohms with this symbol is also okay eh? no problem example two Determine the characteristic impedance for an RG 49A uh, coaxial cable with the following specifications. Uh, small, the, the electric of the conductor, the electric of the cable, uh, and uh, epsilon R is equal to 2.233. This is the dielectric constant. Okay, So you are given in terms of inches. So uh, this is... Uh, I believe this is from American books, eh? so that's why they use uh, inches instead of meter. Okay, so uh, no problem if you use inches. That means all values must be in term of inches. Okay, kalau kita gunakan inches, semua kena gunakan inches. So supaya dia menghasilkan jawapan yang sama jika kita menggunakan uh, meter. Okay, if you want to use meter, use all meter. Okay, but uh, it will produce the same answer. Okay, this is an example, so no problem. Uh, use the inches over here, so 0 0.025 inches. So just put inside the values, okay? So 138 over square root of epsilon r, okay? Multiplied with log uh, d over d. Eh? So this is uh, uh, capital D over small d. Eh? So you get uh, 71.9 ohms. Okay, so tidak ada masalah jika dia berikan dalam inches. Okay, just put inside the equations. Uh, remember, if you use inches, all uh, length must be in terms of inches. Okay, semua jenis panjang kena gunakan inci dalam kes ini. Uh, yes. Doktor, yeah. sorry interrupt. Okay. Nak tanya, um, ada ke soalan yang which is, he doesn't give the distance and he give, the, dia nak suruh cari distance for this question lah. Pernah tak kalau macam tu? Distance macam mana? Maksud saya, uh, dia, bagi, dia, tak, uh, dia bagi ZO punya nilai uh -huh. tapi dalam soalan tu dia minta cari dua distance yang sekarang ni lah which is yang ada dua inches ni ada tak keluar daripada, uh, pernah, pernah keluar tak that soalan? Uh, setakat ni tidak pernah. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, tidak pernah. Biasa uh, bila ditanya ZO, ZO saja. Ah, uh, Okay doktor, thank you. So, uh, so if you put inside the equations, you're going to get ZO equal to 71.9 uh, ohms. And then example 3. Okay, example 3 determine the characteristic impedance for an RG 49A uh, coaxial cable with the following specifications. So, you are given only two parameters, uh, the inductor and also the capacitor. Okay, the inductor and capacitors. So ZO is equal to square root of uh, L over C. So since you're given only two parameters, then we can assume that this is using a high frequency transmission. Uh, so just need to use uh, these two parameters. You can calculate the uh, ZO. ZO is equal to square root of L over C. So uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.118 micro henry uh, they, here is using a feet eh, per feet uh, per unit length eh. so it doesn't matter so normally we use a per meter okay per unit meter uh, so ini dia gunakan uh, kaki eh, per unit feet so uh, in this case uh, if you use the per feet per unit feet that means uh, all length must be in terms of per unit feet okay so uh, no problem, okay, kalau kita gantikan juga dengan meter, uh, it will produce the same answer. Okay, dia hanya nisbah yang berbeza. So, if you see that this is a, uh, L here is a per unit length, here also per unit length. Eh? So, per unit length, so both of this can be cancelled out. So, that's why uh, you just put the value. Uh, so, 0 0.118 micro divide with 21 picofarad. Okay, so you get a 75 Ohm. Okay, straight away dapat ohm. Uh, ini yang masuk saya uh, pernah keluar. Uh, this is what I mean previously that uh, uh, 
uh, in the previous exam, it has been uh, asked uh, something like this. Uh, you are given a, a specification of cable with L and C. Calculate the characteristic impedance ZO. Okay, so you just need to put inside the L and C parameters, then you can get this value. Okay. And then another parameter is uh, propagation constant, gamma. Uh, gamma is a propagation constant, is a measure of the change undergone by the amplitude of the wave as it propagates in the given directions. So dia menggambarkan, uh, it, it shows the, uh, the measure of changes uh, of the amplitude of the wave when it travel at the given directions. Berapakah dia punya menggambarkan dia punya perubahan amplitude dan juga fasa sebenarnya apabila gelombang itu bergerak pada arah yang tertentu. Okay, so gamma, uh, uh, more easier if we do like this, uh, is equal to alpha plus j beta. Alpha is equal to attenuation constant, a function of distance, which determine how the voltage or current decrease with the distance along the transmission line. So this is in terms of napper per unit length. Okay, napper is based on uh, E ln uh, x1 over x2. And beta, beta is the phase shift constant. Okay, perubahan. Uh, dia adalah uh, perubahan fasa constant, eh? constant perubahan fasa uh, and determine uh, the phase angle of the voltage or current variation with distance. Dia menggambarkan perubahan fasa of uh, voltage and current uh, apabila dia bergerak pada jarak yang tertentu. Eh? So, uh, alpha is the attenuations regarding the perubahan amplitudes manakala beta menggambarkan uh, uh, phase variations uh, phase variations of the wave so the beta parameter can be calculated using uh, these equations 2 pi over lambda or you can also calculate beta equal to uh, omega multiplied with square root of l c okay what about alpha? Alpha, you can use these equations. Okay, so uh, from the previous experience uh, in the exam, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, have been asked about this parameter beta only. Okay, calculate the phase shift constant parameters. Okay, where you are given the L and C parameters, so you can calculate uh, using, uh, I think, these equations. So beta is uh, omega L and C. Omega you can calculate using this equation 2 pi f eh, depending on the frequency. So this is multiplied with square root of L times C. Okay. So uh, ini pendapat uh, seingat saya pernah keluar ditanya tentang phase shift parameters. Uh, wave propagations. Uh, so now we want to see the velocity factor. Remember that previously we have uh, seen the equation V is equal to Vf over uh, multiplied with C. So this, uh, what is this actually? The velocity factor, uh, also known as the velocity constant, the ratio of actual velocity of propagation uh, compared to the speed of light. Okay, berbanding dengan speed of light. So, Vf um, is equal to velocity of the wave divided with speed of light. Dia adalah nisbah antara uh, kelajuan gelombang sebenar, gelombang, uh, gelombang uh, signal, berbanding dengan kelajuan cahaya. So, both of these is in term of meter per second and meter per second. So, this is just a ratio, so there's no unit. Maximum of Vf is equal to 1. Okay, So Vf can also be calculated using this equation, the second formula. Okay, So this is the second formula for Vf. Vf can also be calculated using the dielectric constant parameter. So if you are given the dielectric constant parameter, you can uh, determine the, value, uh, the velocity factor which is equal to 1 over square root of epsilon r. Epsilon r is the dielectric constant. 
depending on the material of the transmission line. Dia bergantung kepada jenis material yang digunakan dalam transmission line tersebut. Okay, so uh, we're going to see about uh, uh, epsilon R. So epsilon R common material range from 1.2 to 2.8. Uh, given the velocity factor 0 0.6 to 0 0.9. So this is an example. And then uh, uh, the third, uh, sorry, uh, okay. The, the velocity, uh, the wave velocity. Okay, so this is uh, another uh, formula to calculate the wave velocity. So previously we calculate Vp is equal to uh, Vf, velocity factor multiplied with the speed of light. Where VP is uh, the speed of our the speed of our wave, eh? the speed of transmission wave. Okay, so ini adalah uh, the second formula. Formula yang kedua boleh digunakan eh? instead of uh, VF multiplied over C, you can use a uh, uh, wave velocity equal to one over square root of L C. Okay, boleh juga kita cari eh? menggunakan square root of L C. The unit is meter per second. Okay, also here meter per second. Uh, tadi kita lihat yang ini eh. Uh, Vp is equal to Vf multiplied with C. Uh, so, here uh, Vp is also equal to 1 over square root of Lc. Boleh juga eh, kita cari dalam menggunakan parameter uh, inductance and capacitance. Uh, the unit is in term of meter per second. Okay, standard unit adalah meter per second untuk speed. Speed. Okay. Uh, this is the, uh, the relationship of uh, velocity factor and also the uh, dielectric constant. Uh, so if you see that here we have different kind of materials for the transmission line. Uh, from the vacuum, air, teflon, uh, polyethylene paper, uh, rubber, mica and glass. So the velocity factor... Uh, the highest would be in vacuum, okay, which is equal to 1. So if the wave travel in the vacuum, uh, the speed is equal to the speed of light. Okay, And when the wave travel in the air, all, almost uh, the value is almost equal to 1. Okay, Slightly less, eh? slightly less in the air. So the velocity factor is uh, 0 0.997. Okay, Hampir sama. Eh? So in... Uh, in our syllabus, okay, in our in our syllabus, in this subject, uh, normally we use uh, uh, the 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 speed of wave in the air is uh, almost uh, in the calculation. Uh, we 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 can assume that uh, it is uh, similar with the speed of light. Okay, biasanya dalam calculation uh, kita tidak perlu uh, membuat seperti ini, eh, zero point nine 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 something like that, eh. Uh, so we just assume that in free space uh, it is uh, equal to the speed of light, something like that. Okay, but in reality you should know that uh, the speed is slightly less than the speed of light. Okay, sedikit kurang daripada kelajuan cahaya. And here is the relative constant, okay, epsilon r from one until uh, seven point five. So. Uh, Selain daripada vacuum, uh, dia punya dielectric constant akan semakin uh, besar. So, lagi besar, uh, the, the, the bigger the dielectric constant uh, means that uh, uh, it is less conductivity. Okay, dia menjadi kurang sifat conductor. Eh. Uh, the conductivity becomes less. Okay, because uh, uh, this is more towards a dielectric. Eh. So, dia, apabila dia menggu kita menggunakan materials uh, yang mempunyai dielectric constant yang tinggi maka dia uh, lebih cenderung ke arah sifat non-conductor ok example uh, this is example this is uh, almost the same uh, like the previous uh, final exam questions uh, something like this uh, has been asked in the previous exams uh, so the first one uh, for example here is a coaxial cable uh, operates at frequency of 900 mega. So this is 100 mega. So this is, uh, we can say that this is a high frequency transmission. Okay. Uh, so high and low, it's quite subjective. Eh? So kalau dia dalam ratusan megabyte ke atas, uh, kita katakan dia 
uh, high frequency. Okay, and we are given the parameter of uh, inductance uh, uh, and also the capacitance over here uh, for unit length. Uh, so now you are given in term of fit, so it doesn't matter. He also fit. Uh, so to calculate the phase constant beta. Okay, phase constant adalah beta parameter. So beta is equal to omega uh, times square root of LC. So omega is 2 pi F. Okay, 2 pi F. Uh, ini ada kesilapan di sini. Eh. Sepatutnya uh, 900 mega. Uh, sepatutnya 900 mega. Tapi dia letak 300 di sini. Eh. So kalau di sini 300, uh, sila betulkan di sini. Eh. If here is 300, that means uh, here is supposed to be 300. Eh. Okay. Uh, so kalau you masukkan, cuba kira guna calculator. If sekiranya dia menggunakan 300, maknanya di sini soalan, eh, the question needs to be uh, revised. So this is supposed to be 300 in the question. Okay, sepatutnya soalan 300 bukan 900. Okay, uh, ni you boleh cuba guna calculator. Saya pun nak cuba juga lah eh. Uh, so 2 pi darabkan dengan 300 mega. Okay, darabkan dengan uh, 0.118 micro yeah, 0.118 micro darabkan dengan uh, 1 o pico okay, pico pico yes, this one 9.38 yeah, 9.38 radian Okay, radian per unit length. Uh, remember, if if the unit length here is feet, that means we need to use feet. If the question gives you in term of meter, that means this is in term of meter. Uh, so, dia adalah uh, perubahan fasa radian dalam uh, per unit panjang. So, it is a uh, radian per unit length. Here is radian per unit feet because uh, in the question, we are using feet. Okay, saya dapat it same answer okay if you don't get the same answer you can ask me okay you i, I believe i i assume that you are trying using your calculator now okay cuba gunakan calculator supaya you boleh terbiasa dengan mengira okay so here is 9.38 per unit length here is in term of feet because the question in term of feet otherwise use in term of meter if the question in term of meter i got the same doctor okay good and then uh, the second question okay find the velocity of on the transmission line uh, what is this actually this is actually uh, the question should put here the wave velocity on the transmission line okay the wave velocity on the transmission line berapakah kelajuan gelombang pada transmission line tersebut okay menggunakan parameter yang diberikan okay so uh, here we can use uh, uh, since we are <coughs> uh, we don't know how much is uh, vp we don't know how much is uh, uh, vf and so on so but we are given l and c so we can use the l and c parameters to calculate the uh, wave velocity which is equal to 1 over square root of l c okay so this is equal to 1 over uh, 0 0.118 uh, micro multiplied with 210 pico and then you're gonna get uh, 2 times 10 power of 8 uh, so dalam case ini in this case since we are using feet uh, so we need to use feet per second okay biasanya kita gunakan meter per second normally we use meter per second but since the question is in term of feet per second sorry feet per uh, the unit length in this question is using feet so we need to use the speed also in term of feet uh, so don't don't confuse about this eh uh, biasanya kita berikan dalam sebutan meter so supaya you punya kita gunakan si standard eh standard uh, international standards uh, so uh, yeah so speed is in term of uh, here in this example is feet per second or uh, in the standard unit we use meter per second okay so depending on the question in this case this is just example so don't confuse in term of feet or meter 
Okey, kalau you kalau digunakan feed, maknanya semua calculation mesti dalam sebutan feed. Kalau digunakan meter, semua calculation mesti dalam sebutan meter supaya dapat jawapan yang sama. Okey. And the last question asks about the dielectric constant, which is the epsilon r. Okay, so epsilon r, uh, we want to find the epsilon r. So in order to find the epsilon r, we need to find uh, the VF, velocity factor. Uh, uh, so remember the previous, uh, uh, the previous formula, VF is equal to 1 over square root of epsilon r. So epsilon r is equal to square root of 1 over VF. Terbalik eh. Kalau epsilon r bersamaan dengan square root of 1 dibagikan dengan Vf. So, here. So, in order to find epsilon r, we need to find the velocity factor. So, velocity factor is equal to uh, speed of the wave. Okay. Vp, speed of the wave, divide with speed of light. Uh, okay. So, here is 2 times 10 power of 8 that we already uh, found in the previous uh, example. Divide with 3 times uh, 10 power of 8 speed of light. So we get 0 0.6666. Okay. And from here, uh, we, uh, this is a VF. So VF is equal to uh, 1 over square root of epsilon r because we want to find epsilon r. So epsilon r is equal to square root of 1 over vf. So 1 over 0 0.666. So therefore epsilon r is equal to 1.23. No unit. Tidak ada unit. Okay. Dia adalah merujuk kepada dielectric constant parameter. Uh, using this uh, specific uh, dielectric constant is depending on the material actually, eh? but we can find it using uh, VF also to find the dielectric constant. Ah, this is what uh, I want to show you previously about the uh, what happen if the load has a, a impedance uh, equal to the characteristic impedance, and what if the load has a different value than the characteristic impedance. Uh, so this is the the issue that we want to discuss. So so about this uh, standing wave is uh, uh, one of the favorite topic in the previous final exam. Selalu ditanya. Okay, dalam previous final exam. So uh, the issue here about standing wave. Okay. Uh, so here about uh, the issue of load impedance, eh? the issue of the load impedance, and here we have the uh, Z naught, eh? okay, the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So uh, when Z O equal to Z L, okay, apabila load impedance bersamaan dengan characteristic impedance, all incident power is absorbed by the load. This is called as match transmission line. Okay, so before that, maybe we should understand about incident wave and reflected wave. Incident wave, uh, this one, uh, incident wave is the wave that travel from source to the load. Okay, from source to the load, this is what we call as the incident wave. Reflected wave is the wave that travel uh, at the different directions from load to the source. Okay, reflected wave is the wave that travel back from load to the source. Pantulan sebenarnya. So what happen is that if okay if Z L equal to Z O okay if Z L if if Z L is equal to Z O there is no reflected wave. Tidak ada reflected wave. Sekiranya ZL equal to ZO. In this case, we can say it is a match load where we can achieve maximum power transfer from the source. All of the power transfer from the source will be absorbed by the load. Uh, so dalam case ini, kita boleh mencapai maximum power transfer kerana tidak ada reflected wave. 
there is no uh, pantulan eh tidak ada reflected wave from the load to the source uh, and then what happen if it is not equal what happen if the load impedance not equal to zo uh, so when zo is not equal to zl some of the incident power will be absorbed and some of the uh, transferred uh, some of the incident wave will be reflected back to the source sebahagian power akan diserap oleh load dan sebahagian lagi akan dipantulkan ke arah uh, source so this is happen if zo not equal to zl okay. and this is what we call as unmatched transmission line dia tidak uh, tidak padan okay. unmatched eh. tidak padan so in a mismatched transmission line there are two em wave travel in the opposite directions okay kalau uh, if zl not equal to zo that means we're going to have incident and reflected wave okay so incident and reflected wave happens only if zl not equal to zo okay if equal that means we only have incident wave okay kalau dia equal dengan characteristic impedance kita cuma ada incident uh, wave sahaja okay so kalau dia uh, jika zl not equal to zo then we going to have two different kind of waves incident wave and reflected wave okay so because of this uh, incident and reflected waves uh, it going to produce what we call as a standing wave disebabkan adanya incident wave dan juga reflected wave maka akan terbentuknya fenomena standing wave okay remember standing wave consists of both okay standing wave consists of both incident and reflected wave dia terdiri daripada kedua-duanya sekali eh so the standing wave is actually uh, a phenomenon where we can see the wave uh, looks as if it stands on the x axis kita akan melihat seolah-olah gelombang itu berdiri pada paksi x pada satu-satu masa at a specific time okay seolah-olah eh, dia bukan berdiri eh maksudnya uh, it looks like the wave is standing on a on a plane on a surface plane eh. so uh, so you see that here the standing appear to remain fixed in a position of the transmission line varying on the amplitude so we can only see this uh, in a split second eh. kita hanya boleh nampak in dalam split second sahaja seolah-olah so, dia berdiri okay it has a minima what we call as the knots so the terms minima minima is a uh, this point eh? knots okay so this point is not zero eh so this point is actually not zero value is a minima minimum separated by half wavelength so this is separated by a uh, half wavelength okay and between one between minima between minima points between knots uh, the length is lambda over 2 okay and here is also lambda over 2 okay and it has anti knots also separated by uh, half wavelength anti knots means that the maximum okay so the maximum is this one okay separated by uh, half wavelength separuh lambda okay another here is uh, half wavelength so the distance is half wavelength okay the the uh, half wavelength is uh, to show the distance between two uh, points eh? uh, maximum and minimum okay so uh, okay so you see that the maximum is the the peak value the minimum is the uh, the lowest value over here okay remember that standing wave only happens when zl not equal to the zo okay standing wave hanya boleh berlaku sekiranya uh, zl tidak sama dengan zo ah uh, doktor doktor ah, yeah. mute huh? ya
Uh, suara saya boleh dengar? Uh, dah boleh dah. Okay. Uh, sorry ya, eh, saya tak tahu dia tiba-tiba dia mute eh. Yeah. Okay doktor. Uh, okay, saya sambung lagi ya. Eh. Okay. So kalau saya termute, uh, bagi tahu lagi ya. Eh. Sorry ya. Eh. So ni uh, suddenly become like this. Okay. So uh, standing waves only uh, have. Doctor, one more thing. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you tak please, uh, doktor tak present. Oh okay, tak present. Oh sorry ya. Eh. Uh -uh. Okay. Okay, boleh nampak eh? Ah, boleh doktor. Okay, thank you. So, uh, standing waves only happen when ZL not equal to ZO. Dia tidak sama dengan characteristic impedance. Uh, so, this is the animation of standing waves, okay? So, if we freeze the time, okay, kalau kita freeze time, masa, uh, at one point, we're going to see that the wave looks at it as if it stands on a, a surface plane. Eh? So, you see that here, the yellow color moves on the left to the right. You can assume that this is the uh, incident wave. And the gray color uh, moves from left to the right. You can assume that this is the reflected waves. And the purple color here you can see, you can assume that this is the, the standing wave, okay, the purple color, okay. So, dia berger, uh, it moves uh, rapidly like this, but we can only see the, uh, the, uh, the standing wave uh, when we freeze the time at a specific time. Eh? So, kita akan nampak dia seolah-olah dia berdiri pada taksi, taksi X, eh. So this is also the animation of uh, standing waves. Okay. Okay. So since uh, we we have a mismatch, uh, we have a mismatch uh, transmission line. Okay. So kalau kita ada mismatch transmission line, maka akan ada beberapa parameter lain yang kita boleh lihat eh, dalam uh, transmission line tersebut. Okay. So we have other parameters uh, regarding, uh, sorry, we have other parameters for the transmission line. The first one is uh, what we call as a reflection coefficient. Uh, reflection coefficient, uh, this uh, uh, symbol like uh, R, uh, but it is not R actually, uh, so it looks like R, uh, is the ratio of a reflected wave to the incident wave at the end of the transmission line okay so it is equal to voltage uh, incident sorry reflected voltage over incident voltage or reflected current divide with incident current uh, so this is the reflection coefficient so we can see uh, three different cases, uh, three extreme cases. Uh, so this is extreme cases actually. Eh? So, uh, okay. The first extreme cases is when it is an open circuit. What is open circuit actually? So open circuit is like this. Eh? So we have the source over here. Okay. And the load side here is open. Open circuit. Okay, it is an open circuit. So in this case, ZL is equal to infinity. Okay, it is an open. Dia tidak bersambung. Eh? So in that case, uh, the load impedance is equal to infinity. Therefore, in this case, total reflection will occur. Okay, total reflection will occur. So, in this case, the reflection coefficient is equal to 1, sama dengan 1, okay? And another extreme cases, okay, we have another extreme cases when it is short circuit. Uh, short circuit uh, means that like this, eh? We have the source and then this is a transmission line and both of this is short circuit connected like this okay 
in this case, ZL is equal to zero. And in this case, the reflection coefficient is equal to negative one. So in this case, also will uh, all of the incident wave will be reflected back. Okay. This is also total reflection. Ini juga menggambarkan total reflection, but it is in the opposite direction, uh, reverse phase. Eh? The, the, the phase is reverse. Okay, dia akan reverse. 180 degree out of phase. Okay. Uh, another extreme cases is when uh, during a mesh circuit. Uh, so this is the, 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 the best scenario, which is uh, ZL equal to ZO. So that means uh, here we have the source. Okay. And then this is a transmission line. We have the load over here. Okay, so ZL is equal to ZO. Uh, so there's no reflected wave. So only we have the incident wave. Okay, so in this case, the reflection coefficient is equal to zero because there's no reflection. Okay, tidak ada reflection. Uh, so this is all the three extreme cases. Okay, case yang extreme. Okay, the, the standing wave. Uh, so since we have uh, three extreme cases, uh, so you see that the first and second extreme cases, we have the standing wave. Okay, untuk case yang pertama dan yang kedua, kita ada fenomena standing wave. For the third scenario, we don't have the, ex, uh, we don't have the standing wave because uh, it is a mesh circuit. Okay, so akan ada uh, dua scenario yang Akan ada, uh, there are two scenarios for the extreme cases which uh, will produce the standing wave phenomenon. Okay, so this is the standing wave for the extreme cases. Okay, and uh, you see that uh, this also uh, among the favorite questions uh, been asked in the uh, previous final exam. Ini juga antara soalan favorite yang ditanya dalam uh, exam exam yang lepas eh, uh, about this so this is the answer actually for the previous exams okay so this is actually to show the uh, the standing wave during the extreme cases okay the first extreme cases is for the open and short okay the first is open and short eh. kita nak lihat uh, keadaan standing wave pada ketika open dan juga short circuit Okay, so the first one is about a uh, standing wave on an open line. Okay, this is open circuit. Okay, so you see that uh, none of the power is absorbed by the load, of course. Eh? So in this case, source, uh, if we draw a simple thing, so this is uh, open. Eh? So uh, in this case, uh, ZL is equal to infinity. That means uh, none of the power none of the incident power is absorbed of course uh, it's going to be a total reflection akan berlaku total reflection so the voltage is reflected just as if it were to continue uh, maksud dia uh, there's no uh, the reflection of the voltage uh, doesn't uh, produce a phase variation tidak ada berlaku phase shift eh. there's no phase shift for the voltage component. Tidak ada perubahan fasa pada voltage component. However, for the current, okay, for the current, the current also will be reflected, but it will have a phase shift for about 180 degree. Current akan dipantulkan, tetapi dengan mempunyai perubahan fasa sebanyak 180 darjah. Okay, so you see that here, okay, so this picture to show the uh, the condition of the reflected wave in term of voltage and current. Uh, remember, uh, uh, standing wave is the combination of incident and reflected. Uh, perkara yang kita, kita perlu ingat adalah uh, standing wave ini terdiri daripada incident dan juga reflected wave bersama eh, digabungkan. Okay, so 
standing wave consists of both incident and reflected wave together. But in this picture, we are actually to show you two different uh, line of uh, scenario for the voltage and for the current. Dalam situasi ini, kita nak menunjukkan uh, apakah yang berlaku pada voltage dan current sebenarnya. Okay. But remember, both uh, each of these lines consists of incident and reflected wave. Okay. Setiap garisan ini sebenarnya mengandungi incident dan juga reflected wave. Itu sebabnya dia jadi standing wave. Eh. Remember, standing wave dia bukan satu, eh. dia terdiri daripada dua sebenarnya, incident and also the reflected wave. But now we want to see from the perspective of voltage and current, what happened? Okay, so the blue color, you see that the blue color here to show the, the voltage of the wave. So in an open circuit, so here is an open circuit, eh? open circuit, so the source is on the left. So the voltage would be at maximum, okay, the voltage will be at maximum at the open line. Okay, open line is here, open line, open end. Okay, at the load, so this is at the load side. Okay, open. So at the load, the voltage going to be maximum. Whereas for the current will be minimum. Okay, voltage is anti naught, current will be at naught level. Okay, itu di cara kita uh, sebut. Eh. So, uh, you see that the voltage, okay, the voltage, uh, okay, sorry, as we move from the load, okay, as we move from the load to the source, okay, as we move from the load to the source, we gonna see the voltage and current variation, perubahan pada voltage dan juga current of the standing wave. So you see that the voltage goes to the minimum at distance lambda over 4 from the load. Pada jarak lambda over 4, the voltage drops to the minimum. And then, uh, for another distance lambda over 4, pada jarak lambda over 4 lagi, okay, the voltage moves to the maximum. And so on. Dan seterusnya. And if we look from the current perspective, the current is minimum at the load. And as we move lambda over 4 towards the source, the current would be maximum. And then if we move another lambda over 4, the current would be minimum. And so on. Dan seterusnya. Okay. So you see that uh, the sum, uh, okay, the sum of the, sorry, here, the sum of the incident and reflected wave, uh, reflected current waveform is minimum at the open. The sum of the incident and reflected voltage is maximum at the open. So I already explained about this. Okay, so this is actually, uh, you say that sum because uh, it is consists of uh, incident and reflected. Okay. Sorry. So I move to the next, uh, this one. Eh? What about for the short, shorted line? So this is if, uh, like this, eh? you have the source, transmission line, and... At the load side, it is shorted like this. Okay, so this is the load side. So uh, this is the the second extreme cases eh, where it is a short circuit. Okay, so for the short circuit, uh, of course, there's gonna be a standing wave. So we want to see the the characteristic of the standing wave in the open in a short circuit. For the short circuit. So you see from here, uh, ZL is equal to zero, okay? So, none of the power is absorbed by the load, okay? Tidak ada power yang absorbed by the load. It's going to be total reflection, okay? So, the voltage is reflected with 180 degree phase shift, okay? And the current is reflected, but there's no phase shift. Tidak ada perubahan fasa pada Current also will be reflected. Okay, both voltage and current will be reflected, but only the voltage will have the 180 degree phase shift. 
current will not have the current uh, there's no reflect uh, phase shift in the current so the sum of the incident and reflected current is maximum at the short okay and then the sum of the incident reflected voltage is minimum at the short okay so now we want to see from the graph eh? so the blue color is the voltage the dotted uh, the dotted line here is the current so you see that here this is at the load side and here is the uh, on the left is the source side so the current is maximum at the load side okay so the current this is this current is actually the sum of incident and reflected current okay reflected current sama macam tadi eh uh, for the blue line here is a voltage so voltage will be minimum at the load side so this voltage is actually the sum of incident and reflected voltage so pada point pada load side okay pada point pada load dia adalah minimum or we can say that uh, not value eh? and as we move lambda over 4 towards the source what happened to the current current will be minimum okay and then as we move towards a uh, lambda over 4 towards the source again you see that the current would be maximum and so on whereas for the voltage you see that the voltage as we move from uh, the load to the source at distance lambda over 4 jika kita bergerak lambda over 4 daripada load uh, the voltage would be maximum okay or we can say that anti node and then if we move another lambda over 4 distance we can say that we can see that the 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 voltage is minimum at this point and so on dan seterusnya okay. so this is how we see the the standing wave in these two extreme cases okay and uh, this is the the the, uh, the graph to show the uh, the slow motion movement of the waves eh, until it produces the standing wave. So you can see from A until N here. So the wave travel from left to the right, okay, and from source to the load. When it reach the load, it will start be reflected back. Okay, akan berlaku reflection. So the dotted line here is the reflection. You see that the reflection moves from the load to the source dia bergerak uh, reflection berlaku daripada load kepada source okay and this reflection uh, occurs uh, until it reach the source again and at one point you're going to see that the wave looks as if stands on the surface like this okay so the standing wave here is actually the uh, summation of incident and reflected wave together. Kedua-dua ini membentuk, kedua-dua incident and reflected wave membentuk standing wave. Okay. And then another parameter, another parameter is the uh, standing wave ratio, SWR. So standing wave ratio is defined as the ratio of maximum voltage to the minimum voltage of the standing wave on the transmission line. Okay, so dia adalah ratio antara maximum dan juga minimum. Remember that the standing wave. Okay, we want to find the maximum value divide with the minimum value. Okay, so this is the standing wave ratio SWR. Okay. So it is the measure uh, of mismatch between the load impedance and the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. It is equal to V max over V min, and no unit for this case. Eh? So V max over V min. So here you see that E incident plus uh, volt incident voltage plus reflected voltage divide with uh, incident voltage minus reflected voltage. Okay. So this is a Vmax. So Vmax is a EI plus ER. Vmin is EI minus ER. So the ratio of Vmax and Vmin produce VSWR. Okay. 
So VSWR can also be written in term of uh, reflection coefficient. Okay, boleh juga dibuat dalam sebutan reflect, uh, dihubungkan antara dengan reflection coefficient. Uh, yeah. So you see that VSWR is also equal to 1 plus reflection coefficient divide with 1 minus reflection coefficient. Okay, initially we have this equation. Okay. And if we relate both of these uh, mathematically, we're going to produce uh, these uh, equations. Eh? 1 plus uh, reflection coefficient uh, divide over 1 minus reflection coefficient. So the cross multiplying and uh, rearranging of these equations, you're going to get a uh, reflection coefficient uh, equal to VSWR minus 1 divide over VSWR plus 1. So no unit for this parameter. Okay, tidak ada unit. So ada banyak uh, cara eh, untuk mengira VSWR and also the reflection coefficient. Okay. So with the load is purely resistive, VSWR can be expressed as uh, ZO over ZL or ZL over ZO, whichever gives a VSWR more than one. Okay. So during, uh, in, in this case, uh, VSWR, the way we calculate the VSWR, we need to make sure that it is uh, uh, more than one. So either it is a ZO over ZL or ZL over LO. So either one of these, which gives the value more than one. Okay. So, kita tak nak dia jadi uh, kecil daripada satu. Eh. So, in this case, uh, uh, we, we need to, to, to choose either one of these, eh, which produce a more than one. Okay. So, the disadvantage, uh, so this is VSWR in term of uh, ZO and ZL. Ini dalam sebutan ZO and ZL. Uh, so, apabila kita nak mengira VSWR menggunakan sebutan ZO and ZL, uh, we need to choose uh, uh, the value that gives more than 1. Okay. So, the, the disadvantage of having unmatched transmission line. So, what is the disadvantages? What are the disadvantages if we have uh, ZL not equal to ZO? So, there are some disadvantages. 100% of the source incident power is not absorbed by the load. Of course, eh, there's a there's going to be a reflection. So, reflection and re-reflection will cause more power loss. Okay, proses uh, pantulan yang berulang-ulang ini akan mengakibatkan power loss yang lebih banyak. Okay, the mismatch cause noise interference. Akan mengakibatkan noise interference. Example. Okay, example 5. For a transmission line with an incident voltage uh, EI 5 volt and reflected voltage 3 volt, determine the reflection coefficient. Uh, so reflection coefficient, okay, reflection coefficient is equal to uh, reflected voltage over incident uh, voltage, which is equal to 3 divided with 5 volt. So, this is equal to 0 0.6. Okay. SWR, uh, SWR, you can determine using these equations. Okay. ER Vmax over Vmin, EI plus ER, divide with EI minus ER. Okay. So, Vmax over Vmin. So, in this case, v, uh, SWR or VSWR is equal to uh, 5 plus 3 divide with 5 minus 3. So 8 divide with 2, so you get 4. No unit. Tidak ada unit. So ini, uh, this is the answer, sir. The answer. Input impedance. Uh, so this is different. Input impedance is defined as the impedance at any point in the transmission line. Dia adalah impedance pada satu-satu titik dalam uh, transmission line tersebut. Okay. 
So Z input is equal to EX over I. Okay, this is a Ohm's law. Eh? This is in terms of Ohm. In a lossy medium where alpha, beta not equal alpha, beta not equal to zero, gamma equal to J, the input impedance can be calculated using these equations. Z input, Z O uh, in bracket Z L uh, plus Z O uh, hyperbolic tangent gamma L uh, divide over Z O plus Z L hyperbolic tangent gamma L. Uh, so this is uh, to find the, the value of input impedance at the lossy medium. In a lossless medium, uh, medium yang tidak ada loss, uh, tidak ada losses, uh, no loss, <laughs> alpha is equal to zero, gamma is equal to J beta. So the input impedance can be calculated using ZO uh, in bracket ZL plus J ZO tan tangent beta L divide over z o plus j z l tangent uh, beta l so uh, uh, previously we, we haven't asked this kind of questions eh? uh, because a uh, long time ago eh, uh, long time ago uh, this subject we have uh, in these topics we have the smith chart okay pada masa yang dulu kita menggunakan smith chart eh? we using a smith chart uh, to calculate this kind of uh, Impedance, eh, using uh, to calculate this kind of impedance. So the Smith charts has been removed from this uh, syllabus, from uh, from our syllabus, uh, so that the students can focus on a certain topics only. Okay. Kalau dulu kita ada melukis, eh, we we draw the Smith chart eh, to find the uh, the impedance at different point of angle. Eh, uh, pada nilai beta yang uh, nilai lambda yang berbeza beza. So uh, now there's no Smith chart, so uh, maybe it is not. Uh, we cannot see this uh, clearly without that kind of Smith chart. Eh? So kalau dulu ada Smith chart, kita boleh nampak lebih uh, jelas lah eh, apa benda sebenarnya. Um, doktor, saya ah, yeah. interrupt. For the example five tu, how uh, yang nombor dapat jawapan nombor empat tu kan? Uh, for me, dia yang which is sorry, uh, I tak perasa yang tadi. For me, dia mana satu? This one. Uh, oh, EI mine. Okay. All right. Thank you, doctor. Okay. Okay. So this is a uh, input impedance. So remember that uh, the difference between input impedance and characteristic impedance. Input impedance is based on a specific point on the transmission line, while the characteristic of impedance, characteristic impedance, does not depending on the length of the transmission line. That's the, the main difference. So, this is it. Uh, input impedance. Uh, so, input impedance is the impedance at specific point on the transmission line. Uh, so, uh, di sini dia gambarkan dalam bentuk sebutan R, C, L. Okay. So, you see that here for the first scenario on the above part here is open circuit. So, source. So this is for the open circuit, okay. So open circuit, uh, that means here ZL is equal to infinity, okay. In the open circuit, you see that uh, the transmission line acts, uh, the impedance, eh? the input impedance on the open circuit is, uh, has a characteristic of resistive, eh? they bersifat maximum resistive, so that's why they letakkan, eh? that's why it put a capital R like this. Eh? The, it has a maximum resistance. Uh, okay. And as we move from the load to the source, you see that the transmission line has a characteristic of capacitance. They bersifat capacitance. Okay, at specific point here. Okay, they bersifat capacitance. So this is the, to show the characteristic of the transmission line during the open and short circuit. So this is during the open circuit. And you see that at distance lambda over 4 from the load, uh, the characteristic of the transmission line will be resistive with minimum value. That's why the, the R is small over here. And as we move another lambda over 4 distance towards the source, uh, the transmission line will behave with uh, as a... As a 
here is inductance eh? they are can behave separately inductance eh? it behaves as an inductance uh, characteristics l okay and you see that the value of l going to be higher uh, towards the source and at and at lambda over 4 here okay at this uh, distance you're going to see that the transmission line will behave a uh, maximum resistive and seterusnya eh? what happened during the short circuit Okay, during short circuit, okay, during short circuit like this, so this is the source, so this is the load, okay. So at the load side, during the short circuit, so the, the, the transmission line will have the characteristic of minimum resistance. As we move lambda over 4 towards the source, okay, the, uh, the transmission line will uh, behave as an inductance. Eh? It behave as an inductance. So you see that here is L, L, L. So this is what they menggunakan sebutan L untuk menggambarkan bahawa transmission line ini mempunyai sifat inductance. Okay, inductance more dominant. Until here, uh, at lambda over 4, the transmission line will behave as maximum resistive. And then another lambda over 4 you're going to see that the transmission line behaves as capacitance. Okay. So capacitance here. Okay. At different point. Okay. Until lambda over 2. So this is another lambda over 4. So uh, quarter lambda, quarter lambda it becomes half lambda. So half lambda it becomes a, a small resistor, minimum resistive value. So in here, they, they menggambarkan a... Uh, it shows the characteristic of the transmission line at different point from the load to the source. Apa jadi dia dengan dia punya sifat transmission line itu eh, pada ketika extreme cases, uh, open and short circuit. Uh, so that's why dia tulis uh, bentuk R, L, C. So dia punya, dia bersifat. Eh. Maksudnya, uh, it shows the uh, characteristic of the transmission line. Dia lebih bersifat resistive, dia lebih bersifat inductive, dia lebih bersifat capacitive. Ha, itu maksud dia. And this is, uh, okay, this is the same as the previous. So, it, this is to show the, uh, to show the, what, uh, the characteristic of the transmission line during open, uh, during a few scenario, eh, during some scenarios. You see that here we have the input N, this is the load N. So what happened during the short circuit? Short circuit uh, at the load side, it will behave as a maximum resistive. So this is you can see from this graph. Eh? Okay, short circuit uh, maximum resistive. So short circuit uh, at distance uh, lambda over four input load n. Uh, so this is uh, based on this uh, graph actually. Uh, dia bergantung kepada yang graph ditunjukkan di sini. Eh. So saya teruskan. Antena. Okay. So this is the second part. So saya teruskan. Eh. Uh, so I will continue. Uh, if you if you feel tired, you can go somewhere else to drink uh, water, to go to the toilet, to go wherever you want to go. For a while and then please return back to the class. Eh, saya akan uh, teruskan. Eh, uh, don't worry. Uh, I've I've re uh, I'm recording this session. Okay, saya record session ini nanti you boleh juga melihat di YouTube nanti. Eh, so uh, feel free to go to relax. Eh, so don't be stressed. Uh, because I need to continue. Eh, because uh, ECS. Eh, this subject has a lot of topics. Eh, terlalu banyak topics. Eh which uh, I need to complete, I need to spend uh, the whole class time to explain about all the topics. Okay, ada banyak topics sebenarnya, uh, yang basic, basic topics. All of these are basic topics that needs to be explained. Okay, so uh, normally in the, during the, before the pandemic, uh, normally I, I give the students uh, about uh, 10 to 15 minutes breaks. Eh. Biasanya dulu kita dalam kelas, Saya bagi masa rehat 10 hingga 15 minit. Eh. So, pelajar boleh ke toilet ataupun pergi minum teh tarik dan sebagainya. So, now during the pandemic, we are at home. 
uh, so uh, feel free to do anything that you like eh? so no problem so the next topic of chapter 5 okay this is the second part of chapter 5 which is about the antenna so the the, the characteristic of antenna is to to uh, emit okay, to tr transmit or emit the wave gap, to emit the wave eh? to transmit Sorry, the, the term here is to <coughs> radiate the wave. Dia memancarkan gelombang. Okay, so the antenna, uh, here is the transmitter and receiver. So the characteristic of antenna is actually to, to radiate the electromagnetic wave into the channel. Okay, so tugasnya adalah untuk memancarkan gelombang elektromagnet ke dalam uh, channel or the medium. Okay, so antenna is a metallic conductor system capable of radiating and capturing the electromagnetic energy. Okay, so here if you see that Antenna not only to radiate, it can absorb also. Eh? At the receiver side, it will absorb the transmitted wave. Okay, dalam pada receiver side, dia akan uh, menyerap gelombang elektromagnet tersebut. Okay, so <coughs> here you see that it used to interface a uh, transmission line to the atmosphere and the atmosphere to the transmission line. Dia adalah antar, dia adalah interface eh, antara uh, uh, channel atmosphere uh, and also the transmission line. The transmission line is this one. Eh? So from transmitter to the antenna, we have the transmission line. Okay. And at the receiver side, also we have the transmission line over here. So under the transmitter and antenna, ada satu transmission line atau some sort of cable connector yang menghubungkan antara transmitter dan antenna. Okay, dan juga antena kepada transmitter pada receiver. Okay, so uh, this is about uh, this uh, introduction about the antenna. And this is the antenna equivalent circuit. So you see that here uh, for uh, picture A, we have the transmitter antenna, this one. Transmitter antenna. And then we have here is a free space. And then here is the receiving antenna. Okay, here is the input impedance. Okay, so input impedance is the uh, uh, the receiver side. Eh? Receiver side. And picture B, uh, sorry, picture B and C uh, is the transmitter antenna equivalent circuit. Okay, this is the equivalent circuit for the transmitter antenna. And C is the equivalent circuit for the receiving antenna. Uh, so, ini dipanggil sebagai uh, equivalent uh, circuit. Uh, picture A tadi dipanggil sebagai uh, four terminal network. Okay, so equivalent circuit consists of uh, this kind of things. Uh, the source, the source uh, impedance and also the uh, antenna impedance. Here is the receiving antenna impedance and this is the uh, the, the receiving and sorry this is the receiver uh, transmit antenna this is a re okay so this is all the the, uh, the this is only the antenna part eh? okay so here is the uh, zs is the source uh, transmit antenna this is a z antenna this is a z receiver and this is the receive antenna uh, uh, here is a uh, antenna impedance and voltage of the antenna. Okay, so this is a uh, this is not uh, including. Uh, we are not uh, asking about the equivalent circuit. Uh, so equivalent circuit is depending on the design of the antenna. Uh, okay, In, uh, equivalent circuit ini bergantung kepada design antenna tersebut. So different kind of antenna has different design of uh, equivalent circuit. Okay, dia berbeza-beza untuk set, setiap jenis antena. Dia tidak sama. 
this is a very general equivalent square, very general equivalent square. Okay. And uh, the basic operation of antenna. Okay, so the basic operation of antenna, you see that uh, antenna will, uh, so you see that antenna transmit uh, the wave. Okay, it radiates the wave in a spherical shape. Okay, they are going to radiate the wave dalam bentuk spherical. Okay, so spherical means that they are berbentuk gelombang sfera. Okay, spherical. And when the wave travel at long distance, you're going to see that the wave looks like a planar wave. Seperti garis lurus. Ini apabila dia telah bergerak pada jarak yang jauh, maka dia dilihat seolah-olah seperti uh, satu garis uh, wave. Seperti, eh, kelihatan seperti planar wave. So, this is at long distance. Okay. So, uh, this is to show, this is the Tavernin source. Uh, this is the Tavernin uh, using a trust. Uh, Uh, this is the transmitter and receiver. So this is the picture that I always draw in my class. Uh, so later you're going to see why I always draw this uh, picture in my class. Okay. Nanti kamu akan lihat kenapa saya selalu lukis gambar ini. Eh? Even dalam uh, before the pandemic during the face-to-face -face class, uh, I also will draw this picture at the beginning of my class. Okay, so I always show to the student, so where are we now? Uh, we are now in the transmitter. We are learning about the transmitter. Where are we now? We are in the channel. We are learning about the channel and so on. So, saya selalu um, uh, explain kepada pelajar seperti itu. So, because this is the thing that we learn in this uh, subject. Kita hanya belajar tentang ini sahaja sebenarnya. Tidak lebih daripada ini. Eh. This, this is the basic concept. So, you see that... Uh, from here, so this is very important for your final exam. So you need to be, you need to listen carefully about this uh, complete system. Eh? So uh, where is PT? PT is a power output of the transmitter. Okay, keluaran daripada uh, the output of the transmitter is PT, power transmitter, produced by the transmitter. And the power when it travels to the antenna, okay, when the power travels from the transmitter to the antenna. There are going to be some losses, which is uh, defined as LT, the losses. And the power input to the antenna is what we call as a P in, P in power input to the antenna. So that means uh, uh, P in is slightly less than PT because there's a, there's a losses. Okay, the, so disebabkan adanya losses, maka P in lebih kecil daripada PT. And here at the antenna, most of the power, most of the input power will be radiated towards the uh, receiver side. Okay, um, kesemua power, majority of the power will be radiated uh, ke arah receiver side. Okay, and some of it will be uh, uh, will be. Uh, what we call as a, will be dissipated as a heat. Sebahagian daripada input power ini akan dilesapkan dalam bentuk haba. Eh. This is also kind of losses. Okay, so input to the antenna. So not all of the input power will be radiated as an electromagnetic wave. Some of it will be uh, dissipated as a uh, heat in the system. Okay, and then here, you see that... Uh, the uh, the wave travel okay the wave travel towards the receiver and at the receiver side we're gonna have a, a PD power density so you see that the power density defined as the power per unit area okay power per unit area so it is uh, you see that the wave uh, travel in a spherical shape. So at the receiver side, we can calculate the uh, power density, which is power per unit area, power per unit luas. Okay, that is what we call as a power density. And then uh, 
at the receiver here we have a GR uh, the, the receiving antenna gain uh, so here you don't confuse at, uh, in, at the transmitter we have GP at the receiver we have a GR G is the gain of the antenna okay so previously in chapter 1 we use A previously in chapter 1 we use A uh, so uh, five minutes eh, sekejap, eh. saya ada tetamu sekejap. Eh. Testing, testing. Yeah, job. Yeah, job, job. Yeah. Okay, testing. Semua boleh dengar suara? Boleh, Doctor. Okay, sorry. Eh. Yeah. Okay, so, sebab saya pun ada tamu, so saya teruskan sikit lagi. Uh, okay, you see that uh, tadi, okay. So, at the receiver, we have a, a gain of the rece uh, ant receiving antenna. And then, the power output from the receiving antenna is what we call as a P-out. So, this P-out uh, goes through the tr uh, transmission line where we're going to have another losses, LR. Yeah, you ta. Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, eh? sorry. Saya lupa nak. Oh, saya lupa nak ni share. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. Thank you for reminding me. So. So. Okay. So for the receiving antenna, we have the antenna receiving antenna gain. So the output of the receiving antenna, we have the P out. P out will go through the transmission line. So we're going to have a losses here, which is a LR. 
So LR uh, is the losses. So that means the uh, P out from the antenna has some losses, adanya losses. And the power received by the receiver is what we call as PR. So you see that here PR is less than P out. Okay, because P out is bigger, then we have another losses, LR. And the power received by the receiver is what we call as PR. So later you're gonna uh, we're gonna calculate all of these parameter. Eh? Kita akan calculate semua parameter parameter ini. Okay. Antenna efficiency uh, is equal to uh, p radiation divide with the p input. Okay. Multiplied with one hundred percent. So you see that the p radiation here. Kalau kita lihat p radiation. So, P radiation is the power radiated from the antenna and P input is the power supplied to the antenna. Okay, so the, the ratio of P radiation divided with the P input multiplied with 100% so we get the antenna efficiency. So, basically, we want, uh, the efficiency, the, we want the efficiency to be as high as possible. Kita inginkan efficiency yang sebesar yang mungkin eh. 100% is the ideal case, okay? Because uh, some of the power will be dissipated as heat. Okay, macam saya cakap tadi, eh, sebahagian daripada input power akan dilesapkan sebagai haba, okay? And, uh, okay, so this is how we calculate the uh, antenna efficiency. And you see that here is the, uh, uh, the circuit at the we can see that this is the equivalent circuit of the antenna, okay, which consists of uh, R, E, R, E, and also R, R. R, R is the radiation resistance. R, E is the effective resistance. Okay, R, E is the effective resistance. R, R is the uh, radiated resistance. Okay, so R, R is equal to radiation divide with I square. So now we want actually to calculate the antenna efficiency. Okay, so the antenna efficiency, you see that here, uh, the current flows uh, towards uh, these directions. Eh? Okay, the current flows towards these directions. And uh, from here, we can calculate uh, the power actually. Eh? So the radiation power is equal to I square RR, okay, divide with uh, I square RR plus RE for the effective uh, antenna resistance. Eh? And finally, we're going to get uh, RR divide with RR plus RE, okay. So this is actually you need to multiply with 100%. Okay, baru you, uh, therefore you can get in term of percentage. Okay. So, uh, there are two ways eh, to calculate the efficiency, either using the power calculations, okay, using the power parameters, or you can using the resistance parameters. Okay, we can using the, we can use the resistance parameters. Isotropic antenna. So isotropic antenna is a theoretical concept of uh, antenna where it is not uh, produced in the real world. Eh? It is not. Uh, it does not happen in the real world. But we use the isotropic antenna as a reference antenna when we want to design the real antenna. So apabila kita nak design real antenna. We use this uh, isotropic uh, antenna. This is a theoretical antenna that we use as a reference antenna in order to design the real antenna. So, kita menggunakan ini sebagai reference saja. Dia tidak wujud dalam dunia sebenar. Okay. So, isotropic antenna, if you see here in this picture, so isotropic antenna is actually this... Uh, only this small dot here is a point source. Eh? We call it also as a point source, where this antenna radiates uh, energy in all directions. Dia memancarkan gelombang pada semua arah. Okay, yang mana uh, the shape of the emission 
uh, is in the spherical shape. Dia punya pancaran gelombang itu dalam bentuk spherical. Okay. So, uh, isotropic antenna uh, has a few sets of uh, uh, constant parameters. Dia ada beberapa constant uh, set of constant parameters, uh, fixed parameters. The first one is about the power gain. Power gain is equal to 1 and directivity gain also equal to 1. Uh, so, in this case, uh, there are actually two kind of gains uh, yang mana kita akan lihat nanti. Eh. So, for the uh, isotropic antenna, it has a power gain, GP equal to 1 and although directivity gain, D or GD, eh, Okay, so di sini dia gunakan D. Nanti kamu akan lihat uh, ada kalanya kita menggunakan GD. Eh. So, directivity gain also equal to 1. Okay, so this is fixed. Okay, ni adalah fixed untuk isotropic. So, later maybe next week, I will explain to you about the concept of power gain and also directivity gain. Okay. Because in antenna, we have two kinds of gain. Kita ada dua jenis gains. Okay. The first one is a power gain. The other one is a directivity gain. Uh, so, uh, this reference antenna, this isotropic antenna, has both of the gains equal to one. Okay. So, I think uh, that's all for now. Okay. Uh, so uh, I, maybe we can have the attendance now. Okay, kita akan uh, open for attendance. So please uh, switch on your QR code reader. Okay. So if you have scanned your attendance, you can uh, uh, exit the class. Okay, you can exit the class and go to another class. Okay, so tidak ada masalah. You boleh uh, terus keluar eh, ke, pergi ke kelas yang lain. And for other students, if you want to ask questions, you can ask me questions now. No problem. Any questions is okay. Uh, doctor. Yeah. Yang uh, progress report 2 tu tak nampak eh kat otter. Tak nampak. Tak ah. nampak dekat mana otter? Ah. Oh, saya belum letak. Sorry lagi. Nanti saya letak uh, dekat dalam otter. Uh, sepatutnya saya letak progress report to submission. Uh, later I will put in the otter so that you can submit to the otter. Yes, I, I, I belum letak lagi sebenarnya. Oh, okay. Tapi dia uh, dia punya format, you can follow the assessment form lah. You can uh, just a simple... Uh, uh, formatting like that. Eh? All right, doctor. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Yeah, thank you, doctor. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Okay, welcome. Uh, doctor. Yeah. You tak nak scan lah. Nama siapa? Muhammad Abrisam. Muhammad Abrisam. Uh, nombor 11 tu rasanya. Doktor saya pun. Dah. Abrisam dah? Eh, dah. Ha, ah, dah. Baik. Abrisam uh, dah tak Assalamualaikum, ni. doktor. Ya. Yeah. Siapa nama? Doktor, uh, saya tak boleh nak sebut dah. Muhammad nama? Haikal bin Abdul Rais. Haikal Abdul Rais. Okey, ni. Haikal dah. Ah, Doktor bawa lagi. Oh, Haikal bin Abdul Rais. Ah, yes. Haikal Abdul Rais sudah. Bawa lagi, Doktor. Siapa? Uh, Doktor, ah, Lee. Nama siapa? Tamendran. Tamendran. Yup. Ah, okay. Uh, Thank you, Doktor. Okay, you, welcome. Doctor. Sharma. Siapa nama? Sharma. Doctor okay, Sharma. Sharma. Siapa lagi? Doktor, Pansi. 
29. 29. Azura. Yes, saya. Okay. Oh, dengan 28. Kawan saya tak ada line. Tak ada line. Dia datang uh, kelas tak? Doktor. Kawan yang tak ada kelas tu datang kelas tak? Eh, tadi ha? dia ada. Okey. Ha. Nur Anissa. Ya, saya. Okey. Siapa lagi belum? Ah, uh, Doktor. I think Valerie dia tak. Valerie? Saya ada. Oh, okay, okay. Saya, saya Valerie. Dia, okay, lagi. Like. Saya, saya dia tadi dia kata invalid code, QR code. Oh, okay, okay. Lagi siapa? Doktor Hi, saya. Thank you, Doktor. Saya. Siapa lagi? Uh, saya, uh, ni, uh, 10. Lim Shirley. 10. Lim Shirley, okay. Uh, Doktor, saya nak tanya pasal uh, report ni kan. Okay. Dia ada format dia sendiri tak? Uh, yang konten dia kena perlu ada apa? Uh, you you can follow the assessment form. Uh, kita tidak ada specific uh, format, uh, but you can see from the assessment form uh, how we evaluate the report. Macam mana kita evaluate report daripada situ, you dah boleh buat report itu according to the assessment punya template lah. Uh, if you ask me, there's no specific format. Just follow the uh, the assessment form. Ikut assessment form so kita akan terus bagi markah berdasarkan uh, uh, seperti assessment form lah. Uh, doktor nak tanya assessment form tu kita boleh rujuk dari mana sebab mula-mula doktor bagi PPL project uh, yang PDF file tu dia tak ada content of report. Maksudnya dia tak ada uh, sub topic yang diperlukan dalam uh, dalam kita punya report. So kita kena refer mana satu eh? Uh, refer assessment form for progress report tu saya ada bagi dekat uh, group eh, WhatsApp group. Ya, yeah, yang tu untuk progress report tapi untuk final uh, report. Uh, ah, yeah, ya, untuk final report. Oh, okay, okay. Report. Uh, final report later I will give you the the assessment form. Saya akan bagi juga assessment form untuk final report so that you can follow according to the uh, assessment form. Ha, itu okay. saya belum bagi lagi. Sorry, nanti saya akan bagi. Saya bagi one by one. Sebab uh, uh, why saya bagi one by one sebab uh, kita punya projek berbeza dengan projek semester yang lepas. So, saya kena, kita kena ubah sesuai kita punya assessment form. Uh, so, hmm. later I will give you the final report form and also the uh, project demo assessment form. Nanti demo pun kita akan buat assessment yang berbeza. Ada dia punya form. So, you can see the rubric from there. Okay. Okay. Eh? Okay. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Dah semua dah ambil attendance eh? Ada lagi? Ada lagi dua orang pelajar ni belum uh, ni. Siapa eh? So kalau belum lagi uh, you can Okay. So satu Okay, one, two. So I assume all of you have uh, uh, record the attendance. So so now we have uh, only two students are absent. Okay. So that's all for now. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, doctor. Okay.